Hey guys, welcome to yet another Spectres of the Rail video. Today we're going to finally be taking a look at our new fairy friends and companions, the Kavats. Now, Kavats are basically space kitties and require another upgrade to the companion module on your Lizette. They can be picked up from the dojo after doing clan research, well the module can anyway. The Hiker Masters seem to be dropping the blueprint at the moment as well, however I haven't actually seen them going into my inventory so I have a feeling that actually might be a bit of a bug. So once you've found that uh, module or once you have it installed, what do you do to get your own kitty? Well you need to head on over to the derelict where you will find feral kubros that you need to scan with your synthesis scanner for a chance at getting DNA. The chance was doubled in a hotfix, although it still doesn't seem very high so have fun scanning these guys. Um, I can tell you from a colourblind perspective it's no fun at all. It's a hell of a struggle to see what's scanned and what's not because it's red and green to tell you what's scanned and what's not, which is wonderful. The easiest ways to scan that I found are actually Oberon and his passive, converting the Kavats into allies, making them easier to scan because they're not trying to eat your face. Either that or you can use Warbon to bestial them, scan them that way. That also makes them easier to scan as well. So what do you get when you actually have done all of this? Well, you get a chance at two different Kavats. The Smeeter, which will, <laughs> to be honest, you're going to hear me refer that to that as RNG Cat, and you've got the Adaza, which is Crit Cat. Now, it's much easier to say RNG Cat and Crit Cat than their actual names. Like I say, you're going to hear me talk about that and call them that throughout the entire video, so you're, at least now you're going to know what I'm talking about. Now, RNG Cat has two main abilities. Mischief, which works kind of like Loki's decoy, where it goes invisible and sends out a decoy to draw fire. It's actually a pretty decent ability and does seem to draw quite a bit of fire away from you, which is always welcome. And then you have the true RNG ability called Charm. Now this has about seven different effects. It can cause you to red crit with everything from your weapon to your powers. And this even works on things like the Seer, which has no crit chance whatsoever. So it's pretty amusing because it doesn't have any crit damage. So it'll red crit, but it won't do any more damage than it does normally. Um, but I've been running a red crit Sobek since getting this cat, and it is so much fun. Um, it can also buff your Warframe powers, meaning that for 10 seconds, any powers used um, have no energy use at all. And that includes channeling. So if you see that buff pop up while you're melee only, take advantage of that, and just take advantage of that extra channeling damage, because you can do it for absolutely no cost whatsoever. Another buff you can get is energy, where all energy pickups are doubled. That doesn't stack with Arcane Energize or Energy Pads, only the blue orbs that you get. It also seems to be doubling Affinity and resources gained while it's active, uh, but it's not actually known whether that is intentional yet. My guess is it's probably not. Um, you also have Instant Reload, which is amazing when you're using something like a Sobek or a Supra. Um, skipping that insane reload time is so good. Another buff is to Shields, which means that the next hit you take does zero damage plus you gain an extra 150 overshields which is pretty decent and then finally it has the ability to create a rare resource out of thin air so if you're doing something like neural sensor farming then taking your rng cat might give you a few extra um, resources during the course of the mission so it's definitely worth checking that out now crit cat has two main abilities cat's eye and reflect cat's eye will give you an additive 60 percent crit chance for 10 seconds um, meaning that if you've got 60% crit chance, you get Cat's Eye, you'll have 120% critical chance. And this will also affect your Feno Tenno around you as well, which is fairly cool. Reflect will also do exactly what it says on the tin, really. It will reflect damage back at the enemy, and it will also increase that damage it's reflecting back. So it can actually make it rather survivable, and deal a fairly decent amount of damage just from the reflection. Far more so than the RNG Cat in terms of survivability. It's going to be way more survival than RNG Cat. All in all, it's a pretty strong skill on a pretty decent Kavat. Now, the Kavats also come with a few new mods to look at. Pounce, which will cause the Kavat to leap at an enemy, stunning them for a small amount of time. Sense Danger will cause the Kavat to do a sort of mini sonar. It marks enemies in a radius without the need for line of sight, although without any sort of damage boost. Territorial Aggressions, where the Kavat will mark a patch of their territory pacifies any wild creatures that enter it, can be fairly useful for gathering more Kavat DNA for getting more kitties. You will also have Swipe, which will cause the Kavat to hit an additional four enemies with its attacks, 
and increases its attack range by an extra 2 meters. And that allows the possibility of it actually landing those additional hits. Then there's the mod that I am most impressed with, and that is Sharpened Claws, which as you can see in the background, the Kavat will strip 100% of the armor from any target it hits, regardless of how much armor it has. Combine that with the Swipe mod, and you have the ability or the chance for your cat to jump into a group of enemies, swipe once and remove the armor from a whole bunch of them. I love this mod and it will be on all of my cats for sure, especially when I'm going against those armored enemies. In fact, talking about the mods, the build is exactly the same on both of my cats, 5 former, 2 D, 2 Vs and a dash. The deep polarity is mostly survivability, depends on the frame we use as well. For the most part, it's going to be only link health and shelter, but for frames that have huge armor values, Chroma, Inaras, Valkyr, something like that, I tend to go for a more survivable build. Link Health and Link Armor, since the frame itself can take a hit while we're trying to revive, way more than some other frames, some of the other squishier frames can. In the 2v polarities we've got Maul and Bite for damage, in the dash we have Animal Instinct which for me is a must have, after that we've got Loyal Companion to increase the bleed out time of when the Kavat runs away and dies inevitably, a million miles away from you which happens fairly often, <laughs> um, gives you a bit extra time to go and get them up, after that we have a bit of choice. For Grenier and Void, I will always run Sharpen Claws because of the removal of all armor on attack from the cat, so that's fantastic. And then either Swipe to hit multiple enemies, or Pack Leader to help with survivability and so I can heal my gap with melee if it takes a load of damage. However, against anything other than Grenier and Void, I will replace Sharpen Claws with Pack Leader 100% of the time, since it really helps with that survivability a load. And then of course we have the ability mods for each of the cats. So what do I think of the cats? Well, if you want a combat cat, then definitely Crit Cat is the way to go. The reflectability makes it really, really tanky, even against higher levels, um, and far, far tankier than RNG Cat. It actually scales fairly well, not amazingly well, but the damage reflected does scale reasonably well. But personally, RNG Cat is my favorite by far. The utter randomness of it is so much fun to deal with. Um, you literally don't know what's gonna happen next. You could red crit for a while with weapons like the new call, which does insane amount of damage when it crits. Or reload instantly with something like the Sobek or the Supra with insane reload times. It's a whole bunch of fun to play with. And I tell you what, it is likely to replace my carrier for a while. Especially when I'm not using weapons that don't rely on ammo mutation. Because I've had so much fun playing with it. The Kavats have done well. And have, at least in my eyes, outdone the Kubros. They put, them, they put themselves top of the tree for companions. I'm super, super impressed with them. The customization of them, you can make them look like a wizard if you want to. Not entirely sure whether you want to or not, but it's, I mean, it's interesting at least. The way the Kavats look, everything. The only thing I would say about them that is sort of negative is that the drop chance is... Well, I mean, it was increased, but personally I think it's still way, way too low. Especially since you need 10 at a time to be able to breed a Kuvat. It's something that if you were planning on doing, you know, breeding a lot of Kuvats, you're going to have one hell of a grind ahead of you. But as something we've had teased for the longest time now, Kuvats have really lived up to the hype. At least for me, they've exceeded the hype. I expected another thing to try and drag me away from wanting to use Carrier Prime, but failing. But I tell you what, RNG Cat has succeeded where the Kubros failed for me. As always guys, any questions or feedback in the comments below. If you think I've missed something, let me know. And as always, I shall see you in the next video.